Okay, here's the new homemade combiner boxes. They have uh, ground and neutral busing that you can buy. You know, 14 slot section of them for six bucks. You just saw them in half. I know folks have been super gluing these, but at the risk of dead shorting a diode if they super glue fails and they fall together, I'm not willing to do that. So I bolted them in, bolted them to the plastic, offsetted the from the block, and I covered the back of the screw heads with just a giant glob of silicone so nothing can short out across the back. I'm not worried about anything getting in there to do that. I'd wanted these buses bolted in hard and fast. Anyway, that's the homemade combiner box. The boxes were like $11 and I used all uh, strain relief SO cord connectors just so we'd ne never get any water intrusion and then the lid has got a uh, o-ring seal. Now the panels have 10 panels so they're wired uh, two in series and then parallel. So what you do is you take the positive from one panel and connect it to the negative of the other panel and then you take the positive and negative that are left and that gives you the 24 volts and that's what's coming down to the combiner box. So series parallel now at 24 volts and I'll take you inside and show you what we did in there. So again what I have is left to right uh, at the bottom, that's a uh, 24 volt, two in series, and then the same thing all the way to the top, left to right, left to right, left to right, and then they go into the combiner boxes in two circuits, two circuits of uh, number six wire, which is bigger than it needs to be at 24 volts, and now we have everything on one charge controller. At 24 volts actually I can add four more panels on one charge controller which would be maxing it out I have another charge controller and you can hook the back of this meter there's a data cable that will hook to the uh, processor on the other charge controller this one will lead and this one will follow and they'll run they'll track together that's why I got this particular model and now we have the 3624 and we're able to do laundry and the dryer and the whole house and all the lights in the fans and the skill saw all at the same time wow is that ever cool so we added um four more l16s so i, I had originally an 840 amp hour bank at 12 volts now we're still 840 amp hours Amp hours stay the same, but at 24 volts. So these are in series, and these are in series, and then the two banks are parallel with the positive coming from one bank and the negative coming from the other bank with a jumper in between. That's the best way to, that I could find to balance them, and it is fused, and all of the boxes in here everything is grounded the solar panels are grounded so if there is a short you, uh, it won't sit here and cause a fire because it's gonna trip the or blow the fuse now I would never deliberately set out to install a system where everything wasn't in conduit this was done on a shoestring budget out of pocket It's safe because it's grounded. It's not even connected to the house. This is a shed that's out in the garden. It is safe, but I think it would be better to put everything into conduit if you had the money to do it. And I hope to someday, but right now I just don't have the money and uh, I used the kind of wire that I had and that sort of thing. And uh, used to be an electrician, uh, worked on motor control. 2300 horsepower Ingersoll and Rand compressors 
and 250 horsepower water pumps. I think the one building had 66,000 horsepower in it. And I did the motor control for it. It's all 4160 built with stress cones. And so I know a little bit about conduit and wire and amperage and motors and all of that. I did that many years ago uh, when I was a manager at a ski area. And I was hired on because I was already an electrician. I did motor control in the mills and all that. So yes, I know, sorry, it should be in conduit. But I didn't have the money, so I made it as safe as I could. Everything is grounded and it is not in the house. So apologize for that. If you guys can get your stuff in conduit, it's better. I see a lot of people run a wire just right into the side of a KO, a knockout, and it just hooks right in there and they don't even put a connector or a chase nipple uh, or anything at all or close nip or bushing to keep this, the edges from cutting into the wire. And eventually, if, you know, what happens is when you put amperage on a wire, it expands and contracts from heat. And that expansion and contraction is working that wire against uh, that edge and eventually it will short. So even though this insulation is not rated for this type of Romex clamp, by clamping the wire, uh, it's not sitting there working against a sharp edge. And no, it's not code, but this is way better than just running it in a hole like that. For, to have this kind of a clamp, you should have two insulations. You've got an outer insulation, and then inside you have THHN individually wrapped on the neutral and on the hot. And of course the ground runs between as a bare wire. And uh, this is all UV, direct burial cable, so it's really tough. At any rate, the neat thing that I noticed is this has been running for hours now. And usually when the sun is up and the batteries are full, I'm hanging out in bulk mode. It's only just a, producing a few amps, but it, it was in bulk and very rarely would stay in float. Well, now that we're 24 and all of the panels are on one charge controller, it's been in float all day and the house has been running, the refrigerator and freezer's running, the laptops are running, there's fans going on in there. And now my system's able to be in float during the day rather than uh, in bulk or absorb mode. Float is a happy, happy place to be. So, I hope that explains some of it. Much more efficient running on one charge controller at 24 volts. You folks have a very blessed day. Thanks for watching. I hope I helped you out.